welcome to another episode of Irish Country Life here in the wet, dismal west coast of Ireland. What a delightful day to sit and treat Chris to a beautiful high tea here in the house or the chateau. So this high tea is fit for a king. And so what we're going to have today is we're going to have delicious homemade carrot cake, which I will show you in another video how to make that. And there too is a very funny story behind the carrot cake with Scooter, as usual, up to his usual antics. So please stay tuned for that. And also I've made some homemade petit fours. Now I know traditional tea always has scones with cream, but I actually like my tea because it's something that we're going to eat on its own. I actually prefer it to have a little bit more savory than just the finger sandwich. So I'm making some little mini quiches, which are very simple. And I'm going to go now to the kitchen in a few minutes. And I'm going to make the short crust pastry, which is easy peasy and we're going to make the filling for the quiches and pop them in the oven and whilst they're cooking we'll make the finger sandwiches. Very simply we're going to have egg mayonnaise and we're going to have cream cheese and cucumber sandwich for our afternoon tea. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things on the table before we move out to the kitchen. These beautiful sugar bowls that I acquired on my travels to Istanbul in Turkey um, last year and they're really stunning and I loved it so much that I actually wanted to buy it in all the colours. So I searched different shops and different craft people, to, because they're all handmade, to find them. So we've got a beautiful turquoise one here, which is full of some lovely brown and white sugar lumps. That's for afternoon tea. And then over here, I also purchased a little bit like that, you see. If I see a pair of shoes I like, I buy them in black and brown. You know, one of those people. Okay. So there we have a beautiful purple stone, with precious stones, a stunning sugar bowl. I also bought a cobalt blue and I also bought a beautiful emerald green. And then I bought a few teapots as well to have to mix and match. So that's our sugar bowls that I bought whilst on my travels to Istanbul earlier in the year. So now we also have our tea set here, which is a beautiful fine bone china tea set, almost paper thin that you can almost see through, which is really lovely. And nothing nicer than a cup of tea from a fine china cup. And the lovely teapot to match and the sugar bowl and the milk jug. So I'm going to go now to the kitchen and we're going to get started on our mini quiches. So come join me in the kitchen where we'll get cooking. Okay, so the first part of our afternoon tea that we're going to start with today is we're going to make the short crust pastry for the little mini quiches. Um, so I'm going to start with, in my bowl here, I have got 225 grams of plain flour. In this bowl, I've got 110 grams of ice cold butter from the freezer, and I've also got 55 grams of lard. Or you could use solid vegetable fat. Um, I prefer to use the lard for pastry because I think it gives a better texture. So. Um, we need to work with this pastry quite quickly. We want to handle it as little as possible. And I also have a jug of ice cold water. The amount of water will depend on the, how dry the flour is, etc. So we'll start by throwing in our butter in there. And then very quickly, we want to use just our fingertips to um, incorporate our butter and lard into our flour to the mixture so that it resembles a fine breadcrumbs. Once we've got to that stage, we can then add our water. Remember, ice cold water, keeping all the ingredients as cold as possible is best for the pastry. So I'm going to fill these little mini quiches with a mixture of egg, onion, red and green pepper, and a little bit of oregano, salt and pepper. Very simple and a little taste of milk. And these are really nice because when I'm having afternoon tea, I find that it's very sweet because a lot of it is geared around cakes and pastries. I do like them also, as you well know, but I feel like once you've had your sandwich, you're moving straight on to more sweet stuff. So I think it's nice to have a little quiche or a little um, savoury pork pie or something in between before you start on the delicious sweet stuff. So I'm just gonna work this through and then I'll show you what I mean when we get to that breadcrumb stage. Okay. So the butter and lard has been incorporated into the flour. I use gloves simply because I'm working with lard and it's very difficult to get off your hands once you've got lard on there. So I'm going to just slowly pour in a little drop of water and bring that together just with a knife. And be patient with this because it will come together very quickly. You know, don't just throw all the water in because it's very difficult to rectify if too much water has been added. 
you just literally want to bring it together into a bowl and then you can knead it on the table and then pop it into the fridge to chill for 30 minutes. This will make you a nice uh, nine or 10 inch round quiche. I'm actually going to be using little muffin trays today for our mini quiches for um, the afternoon tea. Okay, I think that's wet enough. So I'm just gonna get my hands in there and I've got a piece of paper. I don't know where that came from. Right, and I'm going to bring that together into a bowl. And then scraping down the sides of the bowl with your pastry so that it gathers up together. Okay, and that's our pastry. And we're going to wrap that in cling film and we're going to pop it into the fridge for at least 30 minutes, but preferably an hour. Because pastry cooks better in a hot oven when it's really cold. Okay, and there you have it. That is our short crust pastry. How easy was that? Don't buy shop bought pastry. This is so much better than that. And it's so easy. It literally takes five minutes. Okay, so we've chilled our pastry for an hour in the fridge. So now I'm going to roll out the pastry and I'm going to pop it into, I've got the silicone muffin air cases. You can use a metal one or you can use a big round one, whatever you prefer. And then you can just cut it into small slices or you can use a, a rectangular one and cut it into little fingers if you like. So I'm going to take some of the pastry from here and I'm going to, because I'm making small ones and I'm not making that many because it is only me and Chris. I'm going to leave some of that pastry aside and I'm going to be using that for, to make something else. Anyway, future jam tart. <clears throat> okay, so lightly dust our surface that we're going to roll our pastry out on. Okay, remember this has got a high lard content in here, so we want to make sure that it's not going to stick to the board. Okay, and then just flour your rolling pin as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this into the oven so that it can be um baking blind for about 15 minutes so the pastry can cook before i add the egg mixture otherwise if you just add the egg mixture straight away you'll find that it's a very soggy quiche and we don't want soggy bottom quiche okay okay so dip your pastry cutter into your flour so that the pastry doesn't stick and i'm literally going to line the bottom of the the muffin case with these. Remember, we're keeping them small because I want them to be bite-sized. I don't want them to be large. I want you to be able to sort of put them into your mouth in one go. Sounds weird. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Okay. So I don't know if you can hear on the film, but Scooter is actually snoring really loudly. Okay, so that is our pastry gone into our muffin cases and it's gone quite far down, which I don't mind because the egg mixture will come up slightly above the pastry, but that's okay because I've got the silicone and because you're going to be using your metal tray, it will come out quite easy. So just push, push them in and then they're going to go into a hot oven, a very hot oven, so about 200 fan for about 10 minutes just to cook the pastry slightly so that it's not uh, going to end up soggy once you add your filling. Okay, I'm only going to make six mini quiches because it's only me, Chris, and of course, Scooter, who's going to be having them. So um, the rest of the pastry I'm going to put back in the fridge and I'll maybe make a jam tart or mince pies or something nice with that. But if you've got more people or you want more or you're going to eat them later, carry on and make all 12 of your um, mini quiches. Okay, so then we need to make our filling. So in here, I've got some red and green pepper, not a lot but a little bit again, because like I said, I'm only making six. So I'm just going to pour that straight in to my jug. There is some red pepper, some green pepper, a small amount of onion and salt, pepper, and a little bit of oregano, or as they say in the States, oregano, oregano. So into that, I'm going to add just the tip of a knife of some good, strong Irish mustard. It just helps to give it a little bit of flavor, but not a lot. Actually, with a little bit more, give it a little bit of a kick. Okay. And then into that, I'm going to add some milk. Okay. And then I'm also going to add in two eggs. And that will be enough for my six little mini quiches. If you're going to make 12, then you'd need to put four eggs. Okay. So the pastry has been in the oven for 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's nicely cooked. It's nice and crispy. 
Um, it's not overcooked because once you pour the mixture in and it has a few minutes, it will soften the pastry. So we needed to go back into the oven to firm up again. So to fill your um, little mini quiches, just pour some of your lovely egg and vegetable mixture into the cases. It doesn't matter that it comes up the side of them because it's actually really nice. Um, it's nice not to have too much pastry, I find. If you have too much pastry, it's put a little bit more in that one and 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 there you have it now they're going to go back into the oven for about 20 minutes to cook okay I've quickly rushed to take them back out of the oven because I just realized when I was clearing up the bowls that I forgot to put the cheese so just little cubes of cheese just to go into the top it helps to flavor them and it also helps for them to set really nicely so this is a nice vintage mature uh, white cheddar. You can use any cheese you like. You can even use a little bit of parmesan if you fancy. And like I said, it just helps to set the quiches and also gives that little bit of extra flavor. Okay, now they're ready for the oven. Okay, so now to quickly assemble our sandwiches. So the first one we'll start off with is our cream cheese and cucumber. So a nice general helping of cream cheese and we'll make this one on the white bread. You can use whatever bread you like. Um, I like the white thick sliced bread. Okay, so once you give a generous smothering of cream cheese on there, and then we'll just pop our cucumber. Now, if you're not ready to eat these, don't make them because they will go uh, soggy. But one way to prevent that, if you want to make them ahead, <clears throat> is to use a little bit of butter. Butter helps to seal the bread and stop the juice from the cucumber, etc., from going in. So once we've put that together, we'll then move on to our egg mayo. And again, we'll just pop our egg mayo on there. Now, what you don't want is you don't want to make the sandwiches so full of filling that as you're trying to eat them, it's going all over the place because that's not a very good look for afternoon tea when you're trying to impress your friends. Okay, so just spread that out, okay, on both slices of bread. And it has been seasoned. The mayonnaise, the mustard, salt and pepper has all been seasoned already. So we don't need to re-season again. So now we'll just pop them two together. And literally we need to remove our crusts. So just hold your bread firmly using the knife, but let the knife do the work. If you try to put too much force, the knife will just tear the bread. So very gently, and you want to remove as as little of the crust as possible, as of the bread as possible, because otherwise you cut away half the sandwich and then it's very wasteful. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can decide how you'd like your sandwiches. So I think we'll get three finger sandwiches out of this. So you just try and gauge what way you're going to do them. And there we have, and as you can see, there's plenty of filling in there. Okay, so that's your three egg, and then we'll do the same, we'll clean our knife. Okay, so going in with a clean knife, and we're going to do exactly the same with this sandwich. Let the knife do the work for you. Okay, and just take off the very bare minimum of the crusts, so that you don't cut away half the sandwich. Okay, and again, you're going to do your three fingers. So one, two, three. There we are, and you can see the lovely flecks of green from the cucumber. I keep the skin on the cucumber, I just give it a good scrub. Okay, so that's our sandwiches ready. We're not going to waste the crusts, we're going to give them out for the birdies and let them feast on the crusts. Okay, so 25 minutes has passed and the quiches if only you could smell them. The smell of oregano, the smell of cheese, the smell of pastry, it smells absolutely wonderful. And there you are. There are little mini quiches. So we'll let them go cold completely in the muffin tins and then we'll just use a knife to go around the edges to loosen them up. So come join us for a sumptuous high afternoon tea. Ta -da!
episode. Thank you everyone for watching. We're going to sit now and we're going to enjoy our sumptuous afternoon tea. And look who's head of the table, Mr. Scooter. And he's saying, that carrot cake smells amazing and I can't wait to try some. Huh. There you are. So don't forget, thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll see you very soon. Take care. Don't forget to smile for the camera, Scooter. The cheese. Are you looking forward to a piece of carrot cake? Ooh, nice carrot cake. Huh?